All right, so looking at your gauge cluster to remove it, there's gonna be a plastic piece all the way in the back, back there. And there's gonna be one back there. You're just gonna simply pop them up with a little flathead or something like that. And once it comes up, there's gonna be a Phillips head screw beneath that, beneath that. And then in the front, there's gonna be a Phillips head right here with one followed by right, same spot basically over here, right there. So once it's, once those are all out, the, the whole gauge bezel can kind of move. Um, if you look up in here, you see there's a connector basically for, this is the rear defroster, there's a connector behind each one of these. Somebody just pull it out a little bit and just push the connector in and release it. Here you can see one of them's hanging down. Once they're all out, the bezel should just simply come right out. We're gonna discard that. Here's the three plugs, in case you wanna see what they look like prior. They're simple, just kind of push down, pull out. Same thing for that one, just push down, pull out. All right, so now if you look, there's four screws, four Phillips head that hold it in right there, right there, right there, and then right there. So I'm going to release those, and then there's gonna be some clips on the back. All right, gonna be kind of hard to show you, but there's one big clip here. Same thing as pretty much all these plugs. Just find the center of it. Wiggle, disconnect. And then the speedo cable. And once it's out, screws are out. There it is, cluster is free. All right now, so with the cluster, you can see these little plastic tabs here. Should be able to follow them around. We're gonna have to push those in and pull the actual cluster off this electronic or whatever you wanna call it, this portion of it. So one thing I almost forgot, this bulb back here, simply a eighth turn counterclockwise. Pry it up through this little bracket a little bit. And you can see where it's... It's a little guide here holding it in. There we go. And they are separated. Put that off to the side. Now I'm going to flip it over onto the back a little bit here. And there's going to be three screws here. Essentially just remove those three. They shouldn't be very tight. You can probably see it's starting to fall into my hand there. Here's the Omni Power Attack. Now I got the 8000. They have an 8000 red line and a 9000. The tuner 2 cams that I'm running should be able to make power to 9 grand. But in the event they don't, I'd rather just have 8. I don't mind going to 8 and then revving a little past it out. I would hate just, it would just be conscious effort. I'd look over and I'd see 9, I'd want to go to 9. And if I shouldn't go to 9, then I'd rather not. I'd rather just know to go to 8 and I can go a little past. That's it. I got nothing else. Pretty simple, straightforward. So the install is basically the opposite of the removal. If you look, there's the hole, hole, and hole. And if you look on the back of the OmniPower, there's some already standoffs on it. So I'm just going to simply. Line that up best I can. Put my finger on it. I'm trying to look through the back holes here now just to see if it's aligned. 
All right. So now would be a good time if there's any dirt or anything on the inside of here to wipe all this off. Other than that, it goes back on the same way it came off. Boom, together. All right, so I just ground down the mounting hardware. I'm not gonna drill into my trunk. I'm gonna 3M taping it. Um, it's a lot stronger than some people realize. Uh, a lot of stuff nowadays is even held on with it. So, this may be a sin to some folks. I do not have a rear wiper on the car. I got rid of it. I put a little plug there. That being said, I kind of want to fill this just to give it more of a clean look. Really cross my fingers that I won't destroy this. I decided to buy a large hole repair kit. Basically, going to try to put a little mesh net behind it. Fill it with some Bondo and smoothly just sand it out. I'm gonna respray the whole thing with some uh, Duplicolor Trim and Black or Trim and Bumper Paint. All right, so obviously you can get some of this stuff elsewhere. I just bought this kit just because it just was convenient and easy. So I'm going to essentially wipe this, clean it, take the little metal grate that it came with, cut out a little bit chunk that will fit there on this side, sort of as a backing. It's very thin. And then on the other side, I'm gonna fill it from there. So it comes with a lot. This is not really intended for this uh, small little repair here. Look at all this that it came with. So I'm just gonna kinda I'm gonna wipe all around it, including on this side. Alright, so I'm kinda just gonna lay this about there-ish. Yeah, let's overlap a little bit. Basically just cutting this in half. Trim a little bit off the top. All right, now this is adhesive on the back side. So as I peel this off, this side is now adhesive. All right, so I added a little bit of some glue to the actual metal cage there that I, little metal patch thing, and just put some weight down on it. All right, so take the container and just sort of mush it around a little bit, it said to do. And one of these pouches is good for one of these pouches. So one full short strain glass kit for one hardener. It's probably a little more than I'm gonna need, but I'd rather have more than not enough. Or maybe it doesn't have as much as I thought it did in it. All right, so here's the first, so you can get real close. You can kind of see some pits and some stuff that's missing. Got some little craters, but other than that, it turned out pretty well right now. Um, I got a little ahead of myself. So the back side looks like this. So all these pores here, there was actual stuff coming through here. I just forgot to film it, but basically I just sanded it down until it was flush. You should be able to see it's still kind of attached to that. I'm gonna have to blow all that down, but. So I screwed up and uh, it dries, the, the mixture dried way faster than I would intended for it to dry. So the first batch was bad, I had to make a second batch and I don't have any left. So I went to the store and bought some more. I bought the glass filler, 
So that's what was in that kit to begin with. So I'm gonna mix some more up real quick and fill in these uh, little patches here. So there it is. I kind of feathered out the sides there. It's real nice and smooth. So I'm going to paint the whole thing black anyways, but I just looked around. I just got some self-etching primer from Rust-Oleum laying around. A little light. All right, so I just laid three coats, about two to three minutes in between each coat. Now it's been sitting for a bit. I'm going to take that 320 grit sandpaper and not get crazy with it, but I'm just going to lightly scuff this up as it's kind of got a little bit of a rough texture. All flushed out now. I got the new CRX logo that came in. Super happy with the way it looks. All right, so overall, she's got 215 miles on her now. Changed the oil at 18 miles. Drove it out to what it is at now. Her, I think it did 211, and I put some new regular, just 5W30 Castrol GTX oil in it now. It's no longer on brake-in fluid. Um, and that's the oil she's gonna be driving out for the time being. Uh, tranny fluid still got another 250 till I change that. We had a small oil leak underneath the tranny, but I'm pretty sure I resolved that. It was just a matter of drain plug. And the Dizzy O ring, I want to say, was a little too small. So I bought an OEM one because the distributor that I have was an aftermarket one. So after I put that on the car, we'll drive it around and we'll see if it still has a little bit of a, a leak or not. Something else that just came in that's not in the car yet, I put them in and I just took them out until the car is totally clean. They're from Cobra Accessories. These floor mats are gorgeous. Once the interior is together, I will do a little video on them. But until then, this driver's side, passenger side looks beautiful inside the car. Um, I replaced the boost cage with another automated boost cage. It still does not work. It doesn't do anything. There's no vacuum or nothing. I plugged a crappy little, I don't know, nitrous brand gauge that I've had forever. It works just fine. So I got to figure out what that's all about. Um, yeah. So the battery does not, it holds a charge, but it, it it doesn't like to stay above like 12.1, which is not enough to start the car. Sometimes it drops a little below it. So I've been jumping it. I have a new battery coming in uh, tomorrow, actually. See, that resolves the issue. Uh, hood spacers. I've just had washers under there. I ordered some, I don't know, off Amazon, like JDM Speed. They're just blocks. But these are like 875 as far as height thickness. I want to say the washers that I got is like half inch. So I'm going to take them off and measure them, and I'm just going to mill these down to that. I don't need the hood any higher than it already is. Um, I'm gonna end up changing the bulbs, all the bulbs to the front. These just came in from Honda. I don't have any, I'm missing one of these for the passenger side blinker. So I just bought one of each and all the little clips to hold the corner light in. Passenger side does not have them. The driver side does, but I ordered enough for just both just to have some backups. Um, so that's that. Other than that, I'm really still enjoying the look of the car. The lip is great stance in the car I like um, so there's those little small tweaks I said I got to do my thermal exhaust is supposed to ship on 10th of May we'll see if that happens I hope it does because I like to get exhaust in this thing the 215 miles that are on it have been some pretty loud 215 miles um, next thing I'm gonna end up doing though is working the rear um, where the cargo area is I'm gonna it'll be a video but I intend on making out of some cardboard and then ultimately cutting whatever I need to out of some wood or maybe I'll have to buy some wood and I'll just carpet with some black carpet. Uh, probably Velcro it down back there and have one screw in the center to tie into the spare tire area, just so it stays. Just so I have something area, because I've driven this to work a couple times and uh, going to the gym and whatnot. I just gotta throw my gym bag back there, but nice to have a little trunk area. There's that and one bad thing. One bad thing that I'm not too happy about, but it is what it is at the time. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it. Maybe you can. There is a little bubble right there in the paint maybe you can see it and there's one right there too 
the camera maybe this maybe won't quick glance you can't really see it when the light's hitting it in the right spot you definitely can see it uh, i gotta look again but i'm pretty sure when i got it painted i paid for like a warranty for i think like five years um as far as just the warranty covered you know chips stuff that was their it, their fault uh paint started peeling fading whatever blah 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 so i don't want to lose the car again this is the first one i've had it up in, in so many years i really don't want to lose it but it's something i need to take care of so i'm going to either drive this over to them call them just figure out what it is how long they need to have it um what the deal is i just don't want to lose the car like you, i just don't want to lose the car again um so rear trunk needs to get addressed hopefully the battery that's coming in fixes my battery issue hood spacers will get done do some corner lights um windshield's being replaced um it ended up cracking as you can see cracked on both sides so that's there i am getting the rubber trim to go around here so that black piece is over there on the water heater that will go in the car it'll go in the car as soon as that rubber piece comes and the windshield's changed out other than that that's about it and i gotta tidy up the interior still and that's it and after that i don't really know what else she's gonna get done minus the turbo kit i'll end up having to buy still but uh, I'm trying to get my wife to drive the car a little more so I can maybe do some street tuning just as far as fuel economy and everything else. Uh, so yeah, besides that, that's it. I'm super happy I had 100 subscribers. I saw that. I'm not going to rattle anymore. I might just try next video as I'm doing the corner watch something, just chat instead of having this chat thing at the end of the video. Unless my 100 subscribers right now enjoy that. And I guess if anything, let me know. Um, sorry if anyone thinks that was a sin what I did to the EDM spoiler. But it's being held on with 3M tape in the event in the future maybe I do want to remove it and let's just say throw a different wing on the back. I don't want to have to pull it up and have like four holes drilled into my trunk. That would just be just a pain in the ass to cover and everything else. So that's why I did that. Um, and I think it's going to hold up just fine. That tape's quite strong. So again, thank you everyone that has watched. I appreciate all of you. And uh, any comments, concerns or anything, throw in the comments. I'm always intrigued to see what anyone else thinks or sees. So uh, I'm just real bummed about that paint. It's probably my only downer that I just kind of decided. I just saw it, so it's kind of made why this demeanor of this video towards the end is a little eh. But uh, again, thanks everyone for watching.